everybody. Welcome to another week of Makers Monday. I am Anastasia Radloff, aka Stampin' Blondie. Thank you for joining me for another week of live step-by-step -step crafting. I hope you all have had an amazing past two weeks. Last week was a holiday, so I wasn't online joining you last week. And I hope you all had an amazing weekend. Now let me go ahead and jump here online, make sure that I'm good to go. It looks like I am good on Facebook. If you are watching me here live here on Facebook, make sure to comment, say hi, let me know where you're joining me from. If you're watching this via replay here on Facebook or my YouTube channel, make sure to comment replay and let me know that you were able to join me this week. Now, I apologize a little bit. I've got a bit of a froggy voice. Uh, I wasn't feeling too well beginning of last week and um, <clears throat> it all settled in my throat. So I lost my voice last week and uh, I'm still recovering a little bit from that. So I may need to take a few sips of water as we go through our projects here today. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, froggy throat. So I hope you all had a great weekend and a great Monday to kick off your work week. Hi, Carol. Hi, Kay. Thanks for joining me here. Uh, I am so looking forward to continuing on with my celebration crafting series this week. We are on week six. Can you believe that? There are only a few more products left in our celebration catalog for me to highlight and I cannot wait to show you the remaining of those products. Now today I'm gonna to be featuring the Delicate Dahlia Stamp Set. Now this is a celebration item that is redeemable with a $100 order. Now this stamp set is what they call distinctive, so distinctive. It is a stamp set geared to make it look like lifelike flowers when you stamp it. Now it's also a perfect two-step stamp set. So you can stamp once for the outline and stamp a second time for the inside. And you can have two different colors to make that lifelike flower come to life. All right, so let's go ahead and swap the camera. Hi, Penny. Hi, Janice. It was great for you to join me today. Looking forward to crafting with you here. So let's go ahead and swap our camera. And I just have a couple quick announcements like always. Now the first one, let me grab it here, <laughs> is my Fall Stampin' Bingo. So I announced this last week that uh, Fall Stampa Bingo is back. No matter where you live in the United States, you can join me. So this is both an in-person event here in Tucson on October 2nd. And if you're not local to me here in Tucson, I have it via Zoom on October 3rd. So with both events, we'll be creating the same project. So whatever your comfortability level is, you can join me for Fall Stampin' Bingo. Now, in person has about four seats left. So if you are wanting to grab one of those and intend to stamp and bingo in person, make sure to do that as soon as possible. The link to register for bingo will be in the description of this video once I'm done. And um, both of the events take place at 1 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday, September 2nd or Sunday, October 3rd. Now we will have six rounds of bingo plus one grand prize round. Make and take projects. We are gonna be featuring the Beauty of Friendship stamp set. Now you can add this on to your class kit if you are wanting to attend both in person or online. Now this is going to make some really beautiful fall projects. I cannot wait to craft and create these projects with you. Now you have the option to add on just the stamp set or the bundle, which includes the beautiful trees uh, dies. So you can add these on to your bingo kit to be able to craft our projects. Now the projects will be featuring these stamps. So if you are online, um, you can swap them out for other stamps, whatever you have in your craft supply, or if you wanna create the exact same project that I'll be making, you'll wanna add on that bundle to your registration. Deadline to register for both in-person and online is this coming Sunday, 
So it will close out on September 19th and all the details will be in the description of this video on how to register for fall stamp at bingo bingo is my customers favorite event that i host so if you are wanting to jump in on this action and see what bingo is all about make sure to register by sunday now i think the in person is going to sell out before then so if you have not grabbed your in-person seat You'll want to do that as soon as possible from the link in the description of this video once I'm done here today. All right, <clears throat> moving on. So if you are new, each week I do something called Prize Patrol. So two weeks ago, I featured the Counting Sheep stamp set in my projects. And also it was our Prize Patrol item for that. So what exactly is Prize Patrol? All you have to do is share this video and comment that you shared. Sometimes Facebook doesn't always let me know when you have shared due to your security settings. So make sure to share and comment that you shared. And our winner from last week is Joan Gordon. So congratulations to Joan. She will receive the Counting Sheep stamp set. This is a celebration item. So very fun to be able to create the projects that I featured last week. Now, Prize Patrol for this week is actually featuring our stamp set that we will be creating with today. The Delicate Dahlia stamp set is in the celebration catalog. Let me show you where it's at. So we're working our way through our celebration catalog. This is week six of my celebration series. And the Delicate Dahlia stamp set's on page 14 of the celebration catalog. Now, this item is redeemable with a $100 purchase. A little different than some of our other uh, stamp sets and papers that I featured before. Those are with a $50 purchase. Now, this is with a $100 purchase because it is a uh, beefed up stamp set. You get more stamps in this and it's distinctive stamp set plus it is a two-step stamp set. <laughs> two-step stepper. <laughs> so we are going to feature this for our projects here today. Let's grab those so you can see what they look like. We are going to be creating a feminine and masculine project featuring this stamp set. I wanted to show you the versatility of these two, um, this one stamp set and how you can use it for a bunch of different projects. Now, when you think flower stamp sets, you think of more feminine projects, but I wanted to show you how with uh, an addition of one of our specialty designer series papers that you could transform this into a masculine project. Now, of course, this card, you could really give it to anybody. It doesn't matter if they're male or female, but it does have more of that masculine tone to it. Now, I really like this card because it reminds me of like 1920s, like that great Gatsby look with this specialty designer series paper. If you are joining me for the first time, welcome. Each week I do a project PDF featuring all of the supplies and details of the two projects that I feature each week. Now, this can be found on my website, stampandblondie.com. It's posted every Monday morning, free for you to grab. It includes all of the item names, item numbers, and prices, and at the bottom, the dimensions of the projects that we are going to create here today. Now you pair this PDF with the video that you're watching right now, and you can create these projects along with me step-by-step. Step. And I would love to see your projects. You can always post them in my Stamp it, Create with Stampin' Blondie Facebook group. So if you are not a part of that, search that out on Facebook and you can join our group as well. All right, sorry about my froggy throat here today. Still still getting over that sickness. It just settled all in my throat. I had no voice last week. It was a good thing we didn't have Makers Monday. All right, our project, like I said, we're gonna feature this first one here, the masculine project. This features the Simply Elegant Designer Series paper. Now, this is a specialty designer series paper found in our annual catalog. And it's a specialty paper because it has foiling throughout it. Now let me try to tilt this so you guys can catch the light and see all the different foil and the shine on here. So this features basic black, basic gray, copper, gold, silver, and very vanilla. 
And like I mentioned, this has a very 1920s Great Gatsby feel to the paper. Now, of course, you can create both masculine and feminine projects with this, but today we're going to be pairing it with our Delicate Dahlias stamp set. And I'm also going to be doing some heat embossing. If you are not familiar with what heat embossing is, it's almost like magic as you see it transform and it's really fun to create this together. All right, so our first step today is I have a piece of basic gray cardstock. This is cut to four and a quarter by 11. As a reminder, all the dimensions for these projects are on that free PDF that you can grab from my uh, website, stampandblondie.com. All right, let me grab my bone folder. Yes, Kay, the DSP is gorgeous. I love the designer series paper and that shimmer and shine. I'm excited to actually use it for some Christmas projects coming up. It doesn't really, you wouldn't think of Christmas when you see gray and gold, but it would be really pretty with some Christmas projects. All right, we are gonna adhere this down using our stamp and seal tape runner, and I want that foil part to uh, be on the forefront of our project. So this is cut to three and three fourths by five and one eighths. And we're gonna place that right in the middle of our card base. We're gonna put this off to the side and I put it on upside down. So we're gonna make it going this way today. We're gonna have two different patterns going two different ways. You know, as I always say, craft happens. So we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> I have a spare piece of basic white cardstock, and we are gonna do our embossing on this. Now, if you've never done heat embossing before, it really does not take um, any certain kind of skill level to do this. It's very easy to do. So we are gonna be using some, a Versamark ink pad, some gold embossing powder, and now this is something I got at my local hobby shop. This is called an embossing buddy. This preps your workspace for embossing and it is like cornstarch in a little pouch. Basically, this makes sure that there's no static on your paper because when you do heat embossing, this is a fine powder and uh, any static that's on your paper, the powder will stick to it and you don't want that. So I'm just gonna rub my paper with this embossing buddy. Like I said, your local hobby shops should have this or you can create your own. Like I said, it's just like uh, cornstarch in a little, little bag. And so my paper is prepped here and we're gonna use a Versamark ink pad. If you've never worked with a Versamark ink pad, it is like clear embossing um, ink pad. And all right, I, I almost stamped with our prize patrol set. So I wanna use mine instead of the prize patrol. So we are going to stamp with Versamark. It's a watermark ink pad, and when you use it, you won't be able to see where the ink is. And a Versamark ink pad dries a lot slower than our normal ink pad, so it gives you a few minutes to be able to uh, pour your powder on and then shake it off without it drying, and then you're out of luck. So we're gonna just stamp this, ink it up, and like I said, you won't be able to see it, but before I do that, I'm gonna put this in my embossing tray so that when I pour my powder in, it'll be a little bit easier to do that. So I'm gonna stamp first here, and I wanna push down hard because this is a bigger stamp, but also I wanna make sure that that Versamark ink is all on my paper. And I'm gonna close that up so we don't get embossing powder on it. Okay, and we're gonna lift. It has a little bit of a pink hue to it. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but we're gonna open up our stamp uh, and powder here. This is gold embossing powder. It comes in a metallic set from Stampin' Up! You get gold, silver, and copper all in one. And we're just going to tap that so all of our excess um, embossing powder is in the tray and then you can use the tray to kind of dump it back in I like to make sure that my workspace is covered when I'm working with embossing powder just because 
you may not be able to see it, but there's some little bits of embossing powder on my uh, paper here. So I'm just gonna use my little uh, desktop vacuum and pick those up. There we go. This is from Amazon. It is amazing. Just search desktop vacuum and you'll find a whole bunch. All right, so here is our flower. Now this has loose powder on it. You don't wanna brush it because it'll brush all the powder away. But what you wanna do is you wanna use a heat tool. Now Stampin' Up's heat tool has two settings, a low and a high. And I'm gonna do this on high. So what will happen with embossing powder, this is gonna be a little loud. So when you use embossing powder in a heat gun, you're gonna move it around your paper. Don't keep it in the same spot for too long. It can burn your paper. A heat tool is different than a hair dryer. A heat tool gets very, very hot. Be careful when using it, you don't wanna burn yourself. So constantly move it around or it will burn your paper. Once your heat powder has turned shiny and metallic, that's how you know it is set. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on. You can turn your sound off if you want, but we are just gonna run our heat gun over our dahlia, making sure to move it back and forth so that it's never in one spot. You can see my paper is a lot larger than what I need. That ensures that my fingers are away from that heat. It is very, very hot. So you just wanna continue to move your heat gun all over your paper. It takes a little bit for especially metallic embossing powders to set. So you're just gonna sit here until it turns shiny gold. Um, before right now, it's kind of like a dull, uh, dull gold, almost, almost like it looks tarnished. So you want it to look like it's brand new, shiny, shiny gold. And you're just moving your heat gun all around in different spots until it is all set. Yes, hold the clothespin. Yes, the clothespin will work too. I had an alligator clip that I used um, on a, a like a lollipop stick. It wasn't a used lollipop stick. I found them at the craft store. Um, I don't know what happened to that. It's probably in my drawers over here somewhere. But yes, a clothespin will work. Um, you just don't want to touch the metal of that clothespin because that can get hot as well. So I'm just moving my heat tool around. Like I said, those metallics take a little bit longer just to kind of heat set. And you may be able to see, but it's kind of taking shape and really bringing out those metallics here. Let's see how it is. Now you can test to see how it is going when you rub your finger on it and it's not uh, sticky anymore. So you can just kind of tap certain spots and see if it's sticky. If it is, keep going, but we are good to go here. So that is heat embossing. Super easy, <laughs> very simple to do. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna fussy cut this. Now, unfortunately, because this is one of our celebration items, this does not have coordinating dies. And with it being a kind of an intricate flower, I am just gonna rough fussy cut all around my flower. You can get as detailed and intricate as you like when you make your dahlias, but I am just going to do a quick fussy cut around this. Now with an embossing powder, so you can do this on vellum. Vellum paper is very thin and it's um, see-through kind of. So you wanna be careful when you do that because it doesn't have the thickness of the paper to be able to kind of protect your hands a little bit there. All right, we're just gonna quick fussy cut our dahlia out like I said. You can get as intricate as you want. I am just going around the edges here. Because remember, this is a masculine card, so it can be a little rough around the edges, and that is okay. So we're gonna come around here and just fussy cut the inside all around here. 
Now, as you can see, while I fussy cut, I hold my scissors steady in my right hand and I turn my paper. That helps me get better leverage on my fussy cut item. All right, one more quick cleanup of embossing powder. And there we go. I'm telling you, if you are a crafter, you need a desktop vacuum cleaner. They are awesome. Okay, we've got our metallic paper here, our heat embossed dahlia. Now we're also going to, oh, I threw this away too early. We're gonna use the other half of that scrap paper and I'm going to stamp these leaves right here using a smoky slate ink. Now this ink is not as dark as our basic gray. I wanted it to be a little lighter because I don't want those leaves really to be the focal point of my project. I want that designer series paper in the background to be and also that gold embossed dahlia. So these are just going to be smoky slate and it lightens up a little as it dries. So again, we're going to fussy cut these leaves. These are very easy to cut as well. You don't need a lot of skill to cut these out. You can get as intricate with fussy cutting as you'd like. You could get in the grooves there, but I am just going to cut around here because these leaves are easy to really cut out here. There you go. There you go. Kathy, I'm not sure how much I missed, but this card is very pretty. Well, thank you. You did not miss very much at all. You missed me heat embossing and putting my designer series paper on upside down. So that's all you missed. <laughs> all right, we have our uh, embossed dahlia. We're gonna flip that over and make sure our leaves are going the right way. And I'm just gonna use a piece of scotch tape on the back of my um, project here to hold my leaves in place. You won't see those, so it doesn't matter what adhesive you use on the back there. And for this, we are going to add dimensionals to our leaf and dahlia. So we've got our dimensionals here and we're just going to place that in the lower left hand corner of our project so our leaf is kind of poking off to the right hand side. Now as the final bit here we have our sentiment. This also uses a smoky slate ink and we're kind of doing a little bit of tone on tone. It's not full tone on tone because we have basic gray cardstock and smoky slate. If it was tone on tone, it'd be basic gray ink, but we are just going to use the sentiment that says, you inspire me. And we're gonna use a scratch piece of basic gray and just cut that out with our trimmer. So we'll bring in our little mini trimmer here and cut off our sentiment and hopefully not our fingers because I took my guard off of that. And just trim off the ends. And for this, because we already have our dahlia popped up here and we want our sentiment to hang off the side, we're only gonna put a dimensional on the back of the right side. The left side, we're gonna use liquid glue to glue this down so that it's all one level. If we put dimensionals on the back of this, it'd be stepped up by two dimensionals here and only one here and it would be sideways. So we're gonna put a dimensional on the back of the right side and then the other side, a little bit of liquid glue and then that will be flush with our dahlia there. Now as a final touch, these are the gilded gems from the annual catalog. And I am going to add three here, so two in the upper left and one in the lower right. These come in three different sizes for eight, uh, $7. So you have a small, medium, and large. 
and I'm going to use my take your pick tool. Now, normally I use this pointy end of it. I'm actually gonna flip my take your pick tool to the spatula side and it locks into place. And that will help me get up under the gems just a little bit better because they are bigger than our normal rhinestones. So we've got two in the upper left here and one in the lower right. And that is our first project featuring the Delicate Dahlia stamp set from Celebration. This is our masculine card that we are creating here today. So let me know which way you like with our designer series paper pointing up or pointing down. Um, I really like the way this project turned out. And like I said, this could be given to uh, female, male, whatever. Um, but I really like the sentiment, you inspire me. That is a great sentiment for projects. All right, our second project here today, again, features the delicate dahlias. Now, I hope you guys can see this in the light. Let me see if I can tilt it. We are gonna do some tone on tone stamping here on our Blackberry Bliss background. So hopefully that is coming through. This Blackberry Bliss is kind of dark, but uh, we're gonna do tone on tone stamping and then we're gonna do some stamping here with Petal Pink ink. So I have another piece of Blackberry Bliss cardstock. This again, just like our last project, four and a quarter by 11. Let's get all of our pieces out here today. We have a piece of Calypso Coral cardstock. Now this is cut with the scallop contour dies. Now, if you are a beginner to die cutting and you're looking for a really good die cut uh, set, the scallop contour dies, I cannot recommend enough. I think that everybody needs to have those in their craft stash because they are great for just basic uh, card making. Gotta make sure my cards go in the right way. All right. We are gonna use, let me flip my baskets. We're gonna use three different inks today. We're gonna use Blackberry Bliss, Calypso Coral, and Petal Pink. This is our color combo here today. So we're gonna start with that same dahlia that we did on the last project that we heat embossed. We are gonna stamp this in Blackberry Bliss ink. So you guys will be able to see what this looks like when you stamp it. We're just going to stamp around. I'm gonna close up my card because we are going to just stamp the edges of our card because it is covered up in the middle by our Calypso Coral scalloped piece. You don't have to stamp in the middle, which you're not gonna see. So I've got my Dahlia all inked up and we're gonna just stamp our way around the edge of our card here and I'm just going around with my Blackberry Bliss ink hopefully that is coming through I know it's a dark ink and it's dark paper so hopefully you guys can see that background piece there let me hold it up really quick and maybe you guys can see towards the light a little bit well Either way, I used this stamp set right here, this stamp, the Dahlia, that we used on our last project, all around the outside of our card. All right, we're gonna close up our Blackberry Bliss because we are done with that. And we're gonna move on to the inside card piece for our Calypso Coral. This is gonna move off to the side and dry. I'm gonna take a sip of water here. <clears throat> All right, our card piece, a basic white cardstock, we're gonna use Petal Pink ink. Now, when you stamp this, it's gonna look a little orangey. Now, as it dries, it turns more of that pink color. But let me get my big clear block. I'm using clear block E. This is probably, I use E and D, these two sizes, the most for all of my card making. I find that it's better to have a little bit bigger of a block than you need and you can kind of hold it down. But E and D are the two ones that I use the most. All right, we've got our card base here and I have my workspace covered. 
just like with our heat embossing, we're going to be stamping off of our paper. So you want your workspace covered. So there's our first. I'll move out of the way so you guys can see that. And then we're gonna stamp in the lower right hand corner and lift. Now these two sides here, we're gonna ink it up just like we did before. We're gonna stamp off and then right on to our paper. This is called the stamp off method. You get both a dark and a light variation of the same stamp. Um, it's a great way to kind of stretch your stamps and use them in a different way. And it has that light and dark variation of the two side by side. So I think that looks really cool. It's very uh, soft and with the petal pink ink, it just, the two that are full on color stand out. And then the other light two just kind of look like they're in the background a little bit. All right, this piece, we're gonna use liquid glue to adhere this down. I'm gonna use liquid glue because it gives me a little bit of give and wiggle room when I place that down. If I were to use stamp and seal, um, this die cut has stitching along the sides. If I were to use stamp and seal when I glue that down and it's a little off kilter, I wouldn't be able to shift and shimmy it into place. So with the uh, stitching in here and the Tombow liquid glue, I can have a little bit of wiggle room. And if it's just not in the spot that I want it, I have a little bit of time to shift my paper around where I need it. Now I have a die cut piece of petal pink cardstock. This is from the Tasteful Labels dies. Again, another great die set for beginner dies or anybody looking for uh, multi-use dies for their craft room. We're gonna use Calypso Coral ink for this and it says, thank you kindly. We're gonna stamp that right in the middle of our die. Close this up because we are done with Calypso Coral. And for the back of our, our card base is now dry. Hopefully you guys can see those dahlias on there. I'll tilt it a little bit. If not, it's dark, it's tone on tone, but it, it has just that little bit of peekaboo of flower on the outside. We are gonna use our Stampin' Dimensionals to adhere this scalloped piece to our card base. You can never have enough dimensionals on your project. I love dimensionals. Probably my every order, I add a package of dimensionals just to make sure I have enough. All right, that's going right in the middle of our card base. Now from here, we're gonna take our uh, stamped stitched piece in petal pink, and this is going to be with liquid glue. Again, just in case I don't have it all straightened up and lined up, I can put it right where I need it. Oh, I got a little ink on my card. So if you aren't familiar with this, this is a mono sand eraser. It's from Tombow, again, local hobby store. It says four ink on it. So I have a little smudge of ink on my card here and you can just erase it right off of there. How cool is that? A mono eraser, sand, and it is life-saving when you have little smudges like that. All right, now to embellish the fun part. We are gonna use Flirty Flamingo ribbon. Now you may be saying, there's no Flirty Flamingo on this card. Why are we using that on this project? Well, I think this color goes perfect. It's kind of an in-between between your petal pink and your Calypso Coral. So this is the Flirty Flamingo metallic gold ribbon and it's very thin it is let's size a quarter inch wide and even with the metallic thread through it it's very easy to tie into a bow so sometimes when you have metallic ribbon it's stiff but this is definitely not and it's very easy to tie into a bow we're going to trim off our edges here 
Now there's a couple different ways that you can glue ribbon down to your card. Some people like to use liquid glue because the bond is just a little bit better, but coming in, we have glue dots. Glue dots are great because they don't require any dry time, so you don't have to wait for anything to dry. And I like to form them into a little ball and then you can put it on, oh, I dropped it, there it is. A little ball and then you can put it on the back of your ribbon and then just use your take your pick tool and put that right onto your card. Now you can add more glue dots to adhere the ribbon just a little bit better, but one glue dot in the center is perfect for adhering your card and you don't have to any dry time. All right, I'm gonna flip my take your pick tool back to the spatula side and bring in those gilded gems one last time. And we are gonna do three gems in one line together right at the bottom of this card. You can see the little spatula really helps with picking up those gems. The take your pick tool is great. If you don't have one of these for picking up gems, it's perfect. You don't have to worry about any kind of gems flying across your craft room or wondering where they went. Take your pick tool and there's actually a, a putty side that goes in here, but I take that out when I craft. All right, so there is our second project featuring the Delicate Dahlia stamp set, which is featured in our celebration catalog and is available until the end of September. So we have almost a little over two weeks left of celebration. So you can grab this for your next celebration item. Let's go ahead and bring in our projects for today and you can let me know which one is your favorite. I have to say, I think the metallic gold one is probably my favorite. While I love pink and I love all the variations of pink, I have to say that metallic always wins for me. So let me know which one you think is your favorite. I think the, the, the gold one definitely stands out for me today. All right. So thank you everybody for joining me for another week of Makers Monday. I look forward to continuing my celebration craft series next week with one of our final three celebration items that I am going to showcase. I look forward to you joining me then and I hope you have a wonderful week. Until next time, bye.